Welcome back to this new video about semantic kernel and in this video we'll start to see more interesting stuff, I promise. And as you can see from this screenshot, this is the very standard way we left in the previous example. We have a kernel builder that play nice with our service collection and I'm simply telling the kernel builder that I have an audio video plugin, period. And then I'm resolving the kernel from the global dependency injection. Everything is similar to the previous example, but now I'll introduce you to a nice feature of semantic kernel, the interaction between a large language model and your plugin. Well, since we are using OpenAI, Azure OpenAI, but basically it's OpenAI, we start um, creating an open AI prompt execution setting. It's the standard execution settings that semantic kernel use to interact with OpenAI. The important thing is, as you can see, I put temperature equal to zero and it's, it's the standard object you see before, but we have an important addiction. We have a parameter called tool called behavior and the parameter value is auto invoke kernel function. And this is the key of this video. You see in the previous video, you have a simple way to call a large language model thanks to function, handlebar, everything. And then we saw that we have a nice way to tell Semantic Kernel, you have a plugin and you can call this plugin. And now we are putting this together. And with this setting, we enable Semantic Kernel to use the plugin directly. Clearly, using plugin is not be made by OpenAI, okay? That should be clear. That should be crystal clear. OpenAI is not capable to calling your code, but that's the purpose of Semantic Kernel. We are telling Semantic Kernel, hey, you can call your plugin. And now, as you can see, I'm not directly using semantic, a kernel object. I'm instead using the global um, dependency injection mechanism to say, hey, resolve for me a night chat complexion service. As you can see, this is, by, uh, this is for demonstration. This is to demonstrate to you that semantic kernel, yes, it has the kernel object, but it is an ecosystem of interfaces that get registered. As you can see before, you, we, we already use the iChat complexion service. And that's the service that allows for me, that allows me to directly call a large language model, okay? And it's an example, you see the chat complexion service, you say, um, okay, oh, that's duplicate. Uh, you can call for kernel, but it's the very same, okay? And that's to show you that you can call with uh, global or, or the global um, service collection or kernel. It's not important. Then I use a video file and uh, you see that's a path that does not exist on my Windows system. This is a path that exists in my Mac. But now I uh, use a chat history and I add user message and the message is, I want to extract audio from this file. Okay, so it, it's a conversation. I want to extract audio from this file. And then I use the chat message content to sync, passing the chat history and using the previous execution setting and the kernel object. So what we know is the iChat complexion service that was previously used simply to call a large language model and it's simple interaction, string in and, and API call out, string out. Now it's more, much more complex um, interaction because I am passing a prompt, but when I execute, I pass the execu execution setting using the out invoke kernel function, and I give it to the iChat complexion service, the kernel object to invoke the plugin. So that's nice because in the first example, in the previous example, we see that we can use the kernel object to invoke the plugin, but now it's practically the the chat model that invoke the plugin. So let me press play and let's see what happens. Okay, and it's running FFmpeg. So you see, I have I have talked to a large language model telling I want to extract audio from video file. And the result is the large language model was invoked in a very special way we'll see in a future video. And it responds, hey, you have the extract audio tool. So the iChat complexion service can in turn use the kernel object to invoke the function, okay? And the output is an error. And, and it's an error because the file does not exist. So if I go, this is the output of care, uh, of FMPEG. This is the output of the process, um, no such file or directory. But then you have the output of the large language model call that say, it seems that the file could not be found. Please ensure that the file path is correct and that the file exists at the specified location. Could you please verify blah, blah, blah. So this is a nice thing. I use the large language model to 
him to ask to the large language model, hey, can you extract audio from a file? And the chat model has the ability to invoke the plugin. And it is doing this for me. And since I've specified a file that does not exist, it invokes my um, my uh, FFmpeg, my function and the plugin. And the result, it's an error. And so from the error, the large language model answered me and say, hey, I've tried to call the plugin, but I got an error. That's fantastic because this is the key. This is the very uh, core powerful uh, capabilities of uh, semantic kernel. The ability to define plugin and let large language model tell you which plugin you need to call and everything happens automatically. Now, another interesting example. I've put the right video file but I'm in a situation where uh, my FFmpeg, uh, for some reason, is stuck. So you see, I have an FFmpeg X that it's still stuck. And so I put the right video file here and it called the large language model. I want to extract audio. Since I'm using the output of the FFmpeg as the message for the exception I'm throwing if I'm not able to convert the file, it actually tells me, it seems that the file is currently being used by another process. So that's fantastic. It called my plugin. The plugin throws an error and say, um, file is used by another process. This is the standard output by um, uh, semantic curve, but by uh, FFmpeg. And the large language model is capable of analyzing everything. So this is how an assistant works. I ask to my assistant to extract audio from a file. It tried the library I wrote through an error. It analyzed the error and it gives me it tells me that's an error. So I can proceed. I see, oh, that's an FFmpeg X stack. I don't know why. Sometimes it got stuck when I invoke from a polyglot notebook. I don't know why. So now the uh, the file is free. So I can, uh, you see this, this uh, very little file. I delete the file and I'm asking my agent to, okay, let's see the agent, understand that it should run my FFmpeg and now it's running correctly. And if everything went successful, as you can see, I have my audio file extracted. So I have, uh, with few lines of code, I have a very basic agent that is capable only to extract audio from a video file, but uh, I, I can ask with simple text. And that's the powerful, and that is the important thing about this kind of interaction with a large language model. You can explain your need by a simple language and semantic kernel is the library that wired them together. And this is the takeaway of this lesson. We previously examined how you call large language model with a simple interface registered by your uh, semantic kernel. Then we see how we can define plugin and how we can invoke manually thanks to the kernel object. And then we put everything together with the out invoke kernel function. It means that I can use the chat model to interact with the large language model, but I pass the kernel object that has some plugin to that specific uh, chat model. And this means that the semantic kernel does the magic because it will use the chat model to take your question, pass the question to the large language model. The large language model knows the list of plugin. And so it takes, it respond back to kernel memory, to semantic kernel, hey, you need to call the audio video plugin and so on. And you have your uh, agent that is capable of executing your code in natural language. Bye-bye. If you like this video, as usual, please subscribe and put a like. Thank you. Bye-bye.